All right, we're back in action. Game number two between St. Louis University and St. Clair College. Saints had a pretty good start on that first one, taking it in 2-0 fashion on Oasis. However, now we got a bit of a, a different map style. We're going with the, the escort style map. So of course, gotta take this cart, push it all the way to the end, through the checkpoints and whatnot. And this map is going to allow itself to some more longer range DPS as we see coming out here from St. Louis and uh, St. Clair respectively. Yeah, Rialto is a great map for kind of these uh, long range pushes. Uh, you have some really interesting kind of, it's probably one of my favorite escort maps because it has some really interesting fight zones. Uh, typically defenders will play off the high ground here on these houses. Um, and we can actually see already uh, Anzo firing away on the push. Uh, Matt doing what he can from the range, doing his damage um, as far away as he can from these kind of diving uh, tanks on St. Clair's side. And St. Clair basically going to allow them to move just fairly outside here, but it's actually going to be the snipe from Trundle to get rid of Bailable nice and quick. And of course, with one huge core DPS are down, it's going to be just a bit messy from there as Weatherman and Dingus Kong not wasting any time jumping all over the Saints and the rest of the squad just absolutely melting here with only, I think that's um, Strider trying his best to stay alive and they're chasing him. They're not going to let him get away with this. He's going to have to jump into the water. And that's going to be so much space. In fact, that very well might be the first checkpoint nice and quick here from St. Louis. Yeah, and as you we were mentioning, obviously taking advantage of those long range DPS, like on a map like Rialta, and especially on a oh, escort cool. map with the payload, that long range DPS really able to put some pressure down without having to contest the point out, out, outright. Gosh, this is absolutely brutal here for St. Clair. They're getting picked off before they even get the opportunity to fight. Matt, I think, got himself a double. Trundle managed to secure himself a quick kill before the fight even started. St. Clair in a world of hurt right now. We may actually see some, uh, some heroes getting switched up here for Saints. Uh, we actually see the Widowmaker being pulled up uh, for available here. Uh, getting poked out out of the window here uh, right before the fight's even getting started. Gonna have to find himself a good uh, people before we, uh, so we can get some shots down uh, from a safe distance. Oh, they tried to chase down Trundle, but going to escape just in time. The rest of the team is here for backup. Bottom barely getting out with his life, but the skirmish is getting underway as we now have the Diva Bomb coming in high and not going to find its mark. Matt's going to be the first casualty here. And Bailable actually went down as well, but Apostle gonna keep him up and alive and try and get back into the fight. And Yustin is taking it down. This is back and forth uh, madness here from across the snipers. Finally, a little bit of like breather into the action until water just goes in. Yeah, I was just gonna say, it looks like St. Clair finally got themselves a little breathing room uh, in this fight. They've been getting pushed out pretty significantly, and this is the first time they've managed to get a hold on the point, on the payload. Um, set up, it gives them some time to set up a defense here uh, before St. Louis pushes in uh, with the Hanzo ulti here. A bit of a zoning ult, but in the meantime, it didn't allow Bailable to get sniped out again. Trundle is just winning these Widow duels so far. And we see more of the bomb again, but the cart was kind of there for protection, it looks like. And St. Louis able to keep this push going. Bailable is still a little bit far away to get back to this fight. <laughs> Point blank up against two tanks, but here comes the Diva Bomb coming out from Weatherman. Does this stick? It manages to take care of both of the support line players from St. Clair. And this is going to probably be another checkpoint coming out here on the side of St. Louis University. Yeah, with no healer, St. Clair has nothing they can really do to fight this, and they're going to have to retreat here and just accept that this point's going down and reset for the next one. Forced to go all the way back to this final point. Now or never. There's still four minutes and 25 seconds left on this clock. Absolutely brutal stuff coming out from St. Louis and brutal in the best way possible if you're here for St. Louis, of course. We actually do see the Widow being switched off from Bailable into the Tracer. Uh, the Tracer, I think, is going to perform a lot better being able to hunt down these snipers in the back without being so vulnerable to getting picked off herself. Um, we'll see how this picture turns out for Bailable in this next fight here. I mean, he was definitely losing that Widow one-on-one -on -one very often, so I don't blame him for trying to switch it up. And I gotta hope for the side of St. Clair that uh, that'll be the answer they need. 
Kawada going in pretty deep, but he's going to have to pop that Primal Rage and get himself back out there. He's going to get drilled even through the ultimate, taken out. I'll see more than the rest of the squad to try and slow this down ever so slightly. It hasn't really moved very far, but this is definitely messy if you're just player. All right, the man should take out Dingus Kong, though. I'm able to turn this into another one. Nicely done from Seymour. Jumping right onto the DPS and supports. And they finally get themselves a chance to breathe. Yeah, really good awareness from uh, St. Clair to know that once that Mercy went down, they're free to dive and push in on this back line and pick up a couple other clean kills, uh, giving them some time to reset uh, for this next push. Push that payload back just a little bit. Uh, make some more room. Give themselves some more breathing room before this next fight. Too much further to go here. Hey there. Pete Lewis. And a lot of it so far has been on the long range play of Matt and Trundle. And that's going to be no the. Dragon from the I just totally forgot the name. Baby. But the, the zoning ult from the Hanzo. But here comes the Diva Bomb to try and answer back real quick. Is that going to find anybody? It is not. And in fact, it's going to be a killing spree on the side of St. Louis. Huge Ox getting himself a double. Trundle finding another one. They're going to be able to push this just a little bit more. Yeah, it looks like St. Clair is going to have just enough time to touch point, but it's going to be a trickling defense for sure. Uh, we'll have to see how they position themselves here and if they can manage to hold the ground long enough for them to get a full reset. Oh, nobody was on cart. That's going to give Seymour enough time to get onto that point and make sure it just stops moving, even if it's just for a moment. Apostle going down extremely early, though, is going to be detrimental to the healing and the support of St. Clair. Eva Bomb comes out, not going to find its mark as of yet. Available, finally gonna get some revenge onto Trundle. <laughs> Discon, I think it's Kong, gonna be able to get the kill onto Prince Wada. And you just see Dingus just going crazy in the back line really slowing down St. Clair. I'm surprised nobody from St. Louis is touching this thing right now. Seymour trying his best to hang on for two life, but he has demecked. His time was basically done for, but the rest of his team have arrived. The cavalry is here and are possibly going to be able to turn this fight around. Another ult coming out here from Matt right onto the point, trying to zone them off for the time being, but not getting any kills. It's going to be a nano boosted weatherman. Demecked nice and quick, but Trundle once again finding himself a quick kill. On to Bailable. Absolute madness coming out here at the very end of this with one minute, about 10 seconds left on the clock as well. And they really want to say, uh, snag this final checkpoint. Yeah, a couple quick uh, hero swaps coming up from St. Clair Apostle, moving from the Mercy uh, onto the Brigida. We actually do see the Doomfist coming out for Strider as well. The uh, Doomfist, I think, is going to be a really valuable book here. We can actually see the Brigida uh, pushing in, taking out the Mercy, taking out Gimzo, pushing in now onto the Ana. The target focus is incredible coming from the support line, really focusing down on St. Louis's supports. It's hard for them to kind of regain any ground, and this is going to be exactly the push that St. Clair needs to hold onto this push for just a little bit longer. Well, if there's any spot that you want to pull the brig out, some close quarters battles like this would definitely do the trick. I like the switch between Strider going over to the Doomfist and Apostle over to Brig. Definitely makes sense. Up close battles, perfect timing. And they're going to be able to push this cart at least a little bit before the next push. And it should be the final push here on this attack. Yeah, we actually see Trundle uh, switching onto the Tracer himself um, with an interesting kind of more of a divey approach, it looks like, coming out of St. Louis. Uh, they are forcing onto this fight here. Uh, Winston uh, focusing in on uh, uh, Dingus Kong here. Uh, we got the shield coming down. There's the Diva mech coming up for Seymour. Seymour's looking oh for an opportunity goodness. to drop it. And that's an absolute wipe for St. Clair. Uh, Seymour doesn't even need to use the ulti. Uh, they're making, there's the cleanup there, and they actually managed to hold onto the point. I hope St. Clair. I hope that was a part of the play of the game because I feel bad. The angle that we saw, it looked like St. Clair just blew him up out of nowhere. Yeah, no, that was really, really well done uh, for Saint, the St. Clair squad on the defensive line. I was just actually about to say before that fight broke out that they're probably happy that they managed to burn four and a half minutes anyways, uh, but actually managing to prevent the push in its entirety. All this means now for the escort style map that St. Clair, all they have to do is complete the push one time through uh, and it's a free win no matter, regardless, there's no overtime on this match. Uh, so we'll have to see how well Sinclair can get this push to go on Rialto here. Oh, this is going to be a tough one, though. That's nearly all the way. It was a solid attack coming from St. Louis University. As you see, there's the outline right there. That's where St. Clair need to push this thing to be successful. And take this in a quick 2-0 fashion. Otherwise, we're going to go to a game number three. We see Bailable going on to the, uh, back onto the Widow, um, actually opting off of the Tracer here. 
Uh, the Widow, I think in the Rialto map, I think the Widow on offense is actually a little better. You have a lot of really good high ground options to choose from for that initial push. Uh, we may see him switch back later on into the round, but I think for the start, it's actually the right call. Um, as you were mentioning, obviously losing those Widow trades into Trundle uh, earlier, but um, I think on the offensive, there's a better chance for the Widow to succeed here. Um, but actually, it looks like Phelan is going to prove me wrong anyways, and going back to the Tracer. So we're going to have double dive DPS, double dive tank, uh, really aggressive lineup with Sinclair on this first push. We'll see how it performs. Interesting. Well, I mean, we know that, uh, that St. Louis is very comfortable on these snipers. You were mentioning before how Rundle was just basically outplaying Bailable in terms of Widow v. Widow. Matt was popping off as well. So if you can't play that kind of game, just jump on them. And they're going to try and make this work as they really quickly blow up Weatherman's Diva. And they're going to actually take the kill onto the Diva itself as well. So player down here. For St. Louis, St. Clair going to be able to try and get this thing pushed over. They're going to find Matt nice and quick. This dive style appears to be working. And even with the support coming in clutch as well, getting on the kill feed as well. Matt going to go down. And that was a pretty clean start. Very similar to what we've seen happen to St. Clair. Looks like happened to St. Louis as well. Yeah, Matt went down twice actually in that fight, getting rezzed by the Mercy and then going down a second time. This Sinclair dive, you know, taking people down one at a time really seems to be their strong suit. We saw it in game number one and we're seeing it again in game number two. This amazing target focus from the Sinclair squad, knowing that when they take one hero down, they can push for the next. Uh, we actually see a fight coming out here in the center. Uh, Winston tanking a lot of damage in the front here. Uh, Wada really holding a zone uh, with the Primal Rage up, maybe looking for an opportunity to use it and push, a, a push the St. Louis squad back off of the payload here. I'm actually kind of surprised to see that St. Louis opted to engage or like to try and stop that first checkpoint but in such a close-knit area. It did not go in their favor in the slightest. Now St. Clair is going to be able to push this about halfway through this second point. Yeah, for sure. And especially with the double sniper lineup, you're really going to want to hold your high ground advantage rather than forcing yourself onto a point where you don't necessarily have to set up. Um, so St. Louis gets punished for that call. Ritz Waddle was forced to pop this Primal Rage instantly as he nearly got nuked by this squad of St. Louis. Was able to get out with just barely enough health apostle from the rest of the St. Clair squad, pushing this cart slowly but surely trying to get it in a little bit further. But the high ground advantage coming in clutch right now for this side of St. Louis. And they're going to find themselves a quick double. And they're probably going to shut this down unless their tank line are able to pull some sort of miracle. But as we see in the background, Trundle is com left completely uncontested. And that is going to be a clean sweep here for St. Louis. Yeah, and this is a really good defense from St. Louis. You know, as we were saying, you know, these high, these snipers need their high ground, they need their long range, and once they manage to set up, they they swung the fight in their favor. And now there's a huge alt advantage for St. Louis. They've got three alts live, Trundle on 85, 88%, Matt on 73, where St. Clair really doesn't have a whole lot to work with. So it's going to take a while for St. Clair to get these alts charged up before this next fight goes their way. Definitely looking good for the team of St. Clair, but they still do have a bit of time. Three minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. And that's a quick pick here from Bailable. Once again, I don't know. That is just on an absolute tear here on this Hanzo. Really coming through pretty clutch so far. Nearly dropping Strider before he even notices that he's even there. He's already got the ultimate Ooh. back up as well. Like, yeah, these headshots are crazy coming out of Matt. Uh, these snipers are really doing everything they can to to carry their team here, uh, these ultimates are just like constantly on cooldown. Like there's no downtime for this Hanzo or this Widow. Really exceptional play from both Matt and Trundle on the same side. We got the ult coming out, so we do have the wall hacks from, uh, from Trundle. But in the meantime, St. Clair is opting to use this opportunity to try and die. Available probably rejoined and they opted to just push the go button and see what they can do. But Matt and the rest of the St. Louis squad right there ready to deny this as they get a bunch of kills in their favor. Matt at least getting himself a double. And the only kill being from the ultimate of available pulse bomb. And they're gonna be forced to retreat once again. Yeah, Strider actually being forced to commit the EMP here. He's that, back down to 6% on his ulti, ulti. Um, with That's Seymour's rude. Devo ulti coming up, it's going to be kind of rough uh, having that EMP on cooldown. Uh, maybe a missed call there. Um, hopefully, we can get that kind of sorted out for the next fight for St. Clair's side. Uh, get that EMP back up, combo that with the Diva mech. Should be enough to push the point down. Uh, but it's gonna, like I said, it's going to take a while for them to get that ult back up. Oh my goodness, St. Clair can't even get to the point to contest because this long-range style coming out here from St. Louis is just too good. 
Trundle and Matt just locking down all the pathways to try and get back to this cart. And we see Apostle again on the Brigida, moving off the Mercy again, back to the Brigida. It worked out last time on defense. Let's see if it pulls the same kind of uh, swing around potential on the offensive here. Um, but St. Louis, happy to take this time to get set up on their snipers. We have, Matt does have uh, the ultimate available again. Uh, Dingus Kong sitting on the Primal Rage. Uh, there are a lot of strong ultimates here for St. Louis on this defense. Trundle just pulling up the map pack, is gonna commit it here, uh, giving him some time to kind of find these targets, uh, get these picks off onto the Sinclair backline. And Wada got chunked down to like half HP before he even crossed the bridge. Gonna off this, I think he did manage to just blow his jump nice and quick to try and get past that area. It's gonna be the Diva Bomb coming out. We got the Dragon coming out as well. And it's gonna to manage to find Apostle. So one of the healing support members of St. Clair going down pretty quickly in this one. And Wad is getting knocked around. He's gonna be taken out. Trundle securing another kill. And St. Clair once again with a minute left. Really hurting another actually see, shot from Trundle. Holy smokes, dude. We actually see St. Louis here pushing up and really trying to force out this defense from St. Clair. Send them back, making it really difficult for them to get the touch here. But with 40 seconds left, St. Clair is going to have to make a really strong coordinated push here. There is a possibility for the EMP uh, mech combo in this fight. Uh, so it's going to be up to Strider really to get that ulti charged up as quickly as he can so that they can swing this fight in their favor. Uh, Hanzo actually not having his ultimate available for this fight. Uh, so if they can all make it, manage to make it back to the point without getting picked off by this Widow, by this Hanzo, uh, this could just be the swing that St. Clair needs. I mean, do you even need an ultimate when you can just click on their head at almost any given command? And I think, no, that's true. oh my goodness, he went back with the Widow 1v1 and lost it right away. And this is absolutely brutal. How about another one, Trundle? Can you give us a little more? And he is going to basically shut down two huge members for St. Clair. Sure, he might go down in the end. But we do actually see enough. three pickups for St. Clair. Uh, Prince Wada being able to take out Trundle in the background with the Primal Rage. Apostle Ooh. popping off on the Brigida. There's the kill on Gimzo. Gimzo goes down, and they actually do manage to hold on to the point here and get a quick little push out of it. It's going to be the second point. I mean, they may not be DPS. I've said this many times to stream already, but they're making their mark known. They're getting the eliminations they need to, and because they were so focused on sniping out those DPS members, it seems like the rest of the St. Clair squad were completely free to just eat up whoever was in front of them. And they were able to get that second checkpoint, give themselves another minute, 10 seconds left on the clock, try and push it the whole way. And that is going to be a nano boosted monkey. He's diving in. They instantly pop Trundle and Matt as well. DPS gone. Gizmo tries to get the res off. This is actually a huge team fight for St. Clair. If they manage to clean this last one up early, which they do, they might be able to push this all the way. What an excellent team wipe from St. Clair. Wada absolutely popping off in that last fight, diving onto those healers. And like I've said time and time and time and time again, St. Clair's biggest strength seems to be in this matchup. Their target focus is impeccable. They know who they need to go for it, and they get that kill done every time. But we don't have time to talk about that now. The Hanzo ulti coming out. The nano boosted Winston pushing down on point. Uh, there's Prince Wada goes down. We actually trade for Weatherman. Strider taking out Weatherman on the side here. Uh, this fight is just crazy. This thing's happening everywhere. Absolutely bonkers. There are two players treated out nice and quick, and Matt finds himself a double. The DPS for St. Clair is gone once again. Do they opt to retreat, or they have 10 seconds left? Do they even get the opportunity to? Rally is available. Try and keep everybody alive as long as possible, but they need somebody on that cart. Do they have somebody available coming in? Try and get the cavalry up in here, but we have the nano boost available. Can he give it to Wada? Looks like that's where he's going to pass it off to. Try and shove everybody off this cart, and if they do clump up into a closed space like that, that is a ton of AOE damage. That's a healer going down. Available gets taken out once again. Gizmo going for the revive and does manage to get Trundle back alive. He switched over to the McCree. Something a little bit more close range. I'll possibly take care of it. And it looks like Seymour and Apostle go on a killing spree and manage to pull it out. St. Clair win this match in 2-0 fashion. That was an absolutely incredible game there. And again, like you could see there, Wada's focus on the back line, you know, taking out the Mercy, taking out the Ana. Uh, Apostle actually rightfully so, getting the play of the game this here on this Brigida. This really yeah, just here we popping off. Yeah, this last fight here from uh, Apostle was insane. Uh, these last minute switches to Brigida were really game changing for him. You know, having the ability to just hold that left mouse button and run at him, and he did it exceptionally well, uh, really knowing his uh, his role in that team fight was not necessarily to heal bot, but to really help his team take down this front line and so that his tanks could have the time to get set up on their back line. Well, it's beautiful when you can heal just by doing as much DPS as possible. And I mean, when they're all lining up in front of you like that, you dang well better use whatever option necessary. If it's just left clicking, doing as much 
DPS as possible to everybody in front of you, so you get maximum amount of healing. Sweet, we take those, and St. Clair, in an absolute nail-biter, are going to get this in a 2-0 fashion. Yeah, and I'm sure the St. Clair Saints are really happy to see that as their first preseason game going in with a 2-0. That's an amazing confidence booster for the rest of the season. Uh, this squad's going to be very, 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 very happy with the performance tonight. Um, really awesome choices from the team in their kind of, like, their compositions. And I really have to say, like, kudos for them for knowing, like, exactly their, the strength of their composition and what they needed to do, kind of identifying their win conditions here in these games, knowing who they needed to kill and picking off their targets with pinpoint perfection. Ooh, I don't know about you, but like it's not that that game was quick, but it felt like a speed run of sorts, so to speak. I don't know if I'm just out of breath or what, but a fantastic first game of Overwatch here. Of course, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Of course, this was preseason action. The actual season itself starts, I believe, it's next week. In fact, if I real quick want to hop on over to the schedule, you can see that this is just the tip of the iceberg in regards to what kind of matches we have coming up here for St. Clair. This is all that's confirmed, but I know there is stuff planned for Tuesday and Wednesday from next week as well. But yeah, be sure to join us tomorrow. As last week we had our League of Legends team in their very first preseason match. They were able to take that one in Game 3. But we get to play our... Ontario Brethren in uh, Fanshawe College and, of course, the Ontario Post-Secondary Esports League. Then on Friday, the Collegiate R6, the Rainbow Six Siege team in their season opener versus the University of Michigan. Then on Sunday, it says TBD right there, but I believe it is at noon. Rocket League, trying to qualify for the Collegiate, uh, a Collegiate League, CRL. They'll be starting at 12. And then Monday, Tespa Hearthstone with their season opener. Oh, and I'm super excited for that you game. You get to play you in know that I'll one, be yeah. There. Yeah, I get to play in that game. I'm really excited to get my first game in uh, with the team there. Um, so make sure you guys drop by and say hi and give us your support in that first game, uh, our season opener, Monday the 21st at 8 p.m. But I want to slow it down a little bit because I think we went through that, like, so quickly. That game, those games were very fast-paced. Uh, <laughs> don't don't be hard on yourself. Those games were crazy fast. And they were, they swung back and forth, especially those control point maps at the very beginning of the mm -hmm. match there. And it was like St. Clair would stomp for like 70%, and then St. Louis would stomp for like 90%, and, and it was a swing back and forth constantly. Um, and obviously the big pivotal moment for St. Clair in this match has to be their defense on Rialto um, on the first round, uh, defending that escort like right at the very tip kind mm -hmm. of giving themselves the chance to actually get back into this game. You know, being able to defend that point and not allowing the game to go into overtime if there is a tie, it can really, really, really makes a big difference uh, in these matches so that you don't have to push it and then push it again. And it makes it so that you're kind of, you have your energy up, you know, these long, drawn-out escort matches, they're exhausting to play. They can be really, really draining if they go on forever and ever. So that last-minute defense was huge for morale and really showed them, gave them the opportunity to come back in the second game. I was convinced that St. Clair was going to have the full cap to try and bring it to overtime rounds with how much momentum St. Louis University had. But like I said, they managed to clutch it. And because of that, this is a quick 2-0 for the favor of St. Clair. Now, they'll get to play, I believe, next week. It wasn't on the schedule, but they'll have, I believe, another preseason match as long as all goes to schedule. But, Shadi, I wanted to thank you for joining me on the commentary desk for the first time you did absolutely fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next opportunity. There will definitely be plenty. We got a lot of matches up in store. And then for everybody at home, thank you so much for tuning in. This, however, is not the end of St. Clair matches. It'll be it for this stream. However, join us 930 at the College Cod uh, Twitch TV channel as our Call of Duty team is entered in a Black Ops 4 throwback tournament, and they have their second match coming up and it's going to be streamed live there so hop on in show some some st Clair support to our squad and otherwise i'll probably see you here tomorrow for league of legends thank you everybody and last but not least of course i always manage to forget this until the last possible section which is an absolute shame because they should not be but thank you to the sponsors st Clair. St. Clair College itself, of course, the SRC, Zuckelman School of Business, PC Outlet, the Alumni Association for St. Clair, and Subway. Any final thoughts, Shadi? Uh, just really proud of my Saints on this first game, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they compete in the next one.
for sure. Starting it off with a W, starting it off right. But that's it for us today. We'll see you over at the College Cod stream at 9.30. If not, have a great night, everybody. Take care.